I can start, right? Okay. Okay, hello everyone. This is Huang Dui Chan. Uh, I'm from Huawei Consumer Cloud. I'm very happy and honored to share our experience in using Cassandra. This is also the first time I'm participating the Apache conference. So go straight to the topics I share. My topic is large scale Cassandra use case and the best practice at Huawei Consumer Cloud. This sharing is mainly divided into three parts. The first part is mainly is using Cassandra in Huawei Consumer Cloud. This part mainly talk about how we use Cassandra. The second part is lessons learned with using Cassandra in production environments. This part talk about some issues we have encountered in the production environment. And the last part is best practice for using Cassandra in Huawei Consumer Cloud. For this part, I would like to talk about some experience from all the issues we have encountered. Some of them became our application rules. So why did we choose Cassandra? The reason for choosing Cassandra is probably the same as most Cassandra users. Cassandra has many nice features such as decentralized architecture, simple deployment, ease of maintenance, and it has good scalability, high performance, multi-site high availability, active open source community, stable evolution version, and it is easy to monitor and it provides microscope level monitoring interface. We also have made a monitoring system for Cassandra based on JMX. Our process of using Cassandra is divided into two phases. The original version of Cassandra we use was still a very early version. The version at that time was not as mature as it is now. At that time, our understanding of NoSQL was still unclear, and Cassandra was used as a relational database. We made a lot of change to Cassandra. We modified the source code to deeply customize the storage layer to adapt to the telecom level applications. On the driver side, we inscapture the interface to, of Thrift, defining JDBC Lite interface and uh, provide SQLite statements. On the assess layer, we provide SQL pathing module, which used to pass DDL and DML statements of SQL syntax and convert them into native mutation objects. On the storage layer, we modify the serialization and deserialization format to reduce storage space and modify the query iterators logic to adapt to the new serialization and deserialization format. In addition, we provide a series of relational database capabilities such as secondary indexes, stored procedure, and trigger. The result 
is that we only use Cassandra on a small scale and even GitHub at last. Nor did it help the business success through Cassandra. The experience of using Cassandra for the first time also taught us two lessons. Firstly, Cassandra is essential a NoSQL database. Don't change it to SQL. Secondly, modify the source code, leading to the further and further drift from the open source version. The experience of the first phase will play a great role in our subsequent large scale use of Cassandra. In the second phase, from 2040 to present, we sum up the experience and the lessons and find the best use scenario of Cassandra. So how to use? First, do not modify the source code. Continue to explore the optimal use of Cassandra. Then according to the characteristic of Cassandra, match the best application scenario. Only use the most outstanding feature of Cassandra. And, and we rewrite the driver routing strategy to realize the switching between DCs and uh, improve the reliability of Cassandra. And we also build cluster level deployment, monitoring and learning consult to comprehensive monitor the running status of Cassandra node without ops center. Continue to follow up on the new versions and the new feature of the community and quickly launch new version to improve system performance and reliability. And we also specified Cassandra usage rule, constraint the application use scenario and made a perfect combination of application and Cassandra. Then we got such outcome. Cassandra is widely used in various scenario of consumer cloud service, effectively supporting the rapid deployment of cloud service in recent year. So how large the scale we are using now? We have a total of 30,000 nodes and more than 300 clusters. The large cluster has more than 600 nodes. All of our Cassandra cluster process more than 10 million requests per second. However, the average latency is only four milliseconds. And the largest table has more than 300 billion records. Cassandra is behind almost all Huawei mobile phone applications and terminal equipment applications, including photo albums, radios, and sport healthy, etc. Every day, Thousands of Huawei mobile phone users benefit from Cassandra. So next, I will share the issue we have encountered in the production environment. As your cluster becomes larger and larger, there will be some problems. In other words, you need to face some challenges under large clusters. I can summarize it to the following challenge. Challenge one, cluster stability caused by large scale and the large data volume. Challenge two, data consistency issue. Challenge three, infrastructure issue. And last challenge, quickly problem identification, narrow down and recovery. I think most Cassandra users may 
have encountered this challenge as well. Next, I will share our experience according to some typical Cassandra issue list below, such as too many cluster nodes, large partition key, hot key, and uh, tombstone. This what first one case is the <clears throat> capacity issue. This issue caused by too many nodes in a cluster. A production cluster has a single cluster of 600. During the expansion process, <clears throat> the CPU and the load of all nodes soared, causing all application requests to be blocked. <clears throat> After stopping the expansion node, the cluster node CPU and load return to normal. <clears throat> <clears throat> we can see from the screenshot here the disk until you the disk util and the load of cluster node has risen sharply. <clears throat> okay, I have a drink. Uh, <clears throat> the success rate of requests have dropped by 15%. Facing the problem of large number of nodes. There are two solutions. First, control the scale of the single cluster. Many number of the virtual token. Try not to exact 100,000. <clears> After the cluster is too large, it is necessary to consider the spill of the cluster so that a cluster cannot be infinitely expanded. <clears throat> this case is about issue of too much data on a single node. In a production cluster, the data volume of a single node reach 5 TB. <clears throat> the cluster become very unstable, frequent full GC and even out of memory. <clears throat> data migration is also very easy to view. The amount of node data is large, and objects such as Brom filter and the index summary occupy a large amount of memory, which eventually leads to frequent full GC and even out of memory. When expanding, if LCS is used, but the STCS is used for level zero layer, it will be very easy to have is a fiction disk during the level zero layer compaction process and the cost expansion fuel. The solution is simple. Method one, expand the disk. Method two, temp rarely modify the compaction strategy of level zero from STCS to LCS. Set this parameter here to true. In addition, the data volume of a node should be monitored in real time. It is recommended that the data volume of a single node not exceed 1.5 TB. And this case is an issue caused by compassion accumulation. At the production cluster node, there are a lot of compaction pending tasks. This will affect the read performance and also cause the data volume of this node to be much larger than of the other node. Use the compaction status command to view node compaction. It is found that the node has a large number of pending tasks. A large amount of the pen compaction pending shows that 
compaction cannot keep up with the writing speed. And the old, lots of small file cannot be compacted in time, which affect the read performance of the application. This figure here shows that more than 30,000 compaction are pending, and it results in slow read request to this node. And this two figures shows the comparison between the compaction task without pending and with pending. The graph here is normal. The, this is the without pending task shows a read latency of 0 0.5 milliseconds. And uh, the graphy of write show with pending task shows a read latency of 161 milliseconds. There are many two methods to slow this issue. Adjust the compression speed through node two. If the accumulation reduce is not obviously after using method one, try to adjust to these two prime merit parameter. Such, for example, this one is <clears throat> configured in the Cassandra.ml, and uh, this parameter is <clears throat> JVM start parameter. <clears throat> Finish, finish some of the issue encounter of Cassandra server. Let's talk about some application related issue. This case is about large partition key. A production cluster has a large key issue. Even the amount of the data under some partition reach to GB and there are continuous request to assess, uh, access the large partition key, which leads to frequent full GC of some node and eventually leads to out of memory. As can be seen from the figure, there are many alarm logs in the Cassandra system logs. The solution is to design the table structure together with the applica application side and standardize the weight Cassandra in use. Then avoid large key from the design. And what we need to pay special attention to is that large partition key issue can only be solved on the design. It is too late to th think about how to avoid it after the large partition key has an impact on the production environment. There are two ways to solve the large partition key issue from the design. First, don't modify the table structure, but solve the large partition key by changing the application usage scenario. Or you can modify the table structure of application to achieve the purpose of discrete large partition key. This is the case for method one. A storage application has a file deletion records table for recording the deletion record of the file. The partition key is file ID. <clears throat> For example, 
for personal file. The deletion record under a file will not be very large. But for public file, such as lock screen picture of Huawei forms, there will be a large partition key issue. And then we did the optimization. Before each file is deleted, first determine whether the file is a hot file. If it is a hot file, no more delete record will be end. In this way, there will not be too many deletion records under public file. And this is a case for method two. A radio application use a table to record the reservation detail of a radio resource. For example, a movie is about to be shown and the user can be subscribed to news in evidence at, at, in advance. <clears throat> After the movie goes online, <clears throat> the application push the message to each user. The primary key of this table are resource ID and user ID. The partition key is resource ID. If you, you use resource ID to record a popular movie, then the user ID of the resource ID will reach tens of millions or even hundreds of millions. This will definitely cause a large partition key issue. The type of application has two characteristics. First, popular resource will cause the large partition key issue. The frequency of access to resource will not to be high. A common scenario is to push notification to user after the resource are online. <clears throat> this kind of things does not have high requirement for timeliness. In this case, the solution is to discrete the partition key. Detail about discretizing partition key are omitted. <clears throat> The method in the slide is just an example. You can discretize partition key in other way. Here, just an example. <clears throat> the resource ID continue to be discrete, <clears throat> such as discrete into <clears throat> 10,000. And this case is about Hockey. Frequent operation of the same keys in a short period of time will cause the CPU and the load of the node where the key is located to behind. It will affect the request sent to this node and cause the success rate to drop. The monitoring system shows the CPU and the load of some nodes are very high. You can see the figure on the right here. So how to recovery? First, find the hotkey, log in to the abnormal node and use top partition to check which partition key under which table has the highliness operating frequency. Then show the hotkey. The application side can use the blacklist capability on the SDK side that we deployed based on the Cassandra driver to block the hotkey directly. And finally, it is designed the, to 
designed to avoid causing hotkey problems in Cassandra. <clears throat> First, identified application scenario that may general hotkeys during design. And then, according to the identified scene, set up a cache on the application side to reduce the impact on the database when the hotkey appears. And this case is about tombstone. Frequent deletion of partition key in a short period of time will result in a very large number of tombstone in a period of GC grace. This is this in turn lead to slow queries, high CPU utilization, load and frequent GC. It can be seen from the monitoring system that the CPU utilization and the load of some nodes are very high. The right figure here. At the same time, we receive a lot of warning message. And then we use the JSTAC command to print stacked information and find that the thread with high CPU usage are basically all query thread which are all doing tombstone filtering. The emergency measure is that first delete the data under the partition key and then reduce GC grace. In this scenario, this value can be reduced to speed up the physical clean and uh, recycle time of tombstone. Through this event, we believe that Cassandra is not suitable for applications that are frequently deleted and queried. The last few cases are about infrastructure. This is about network backlog. This case is mainly to share how to identify such issue. The latency of a certain application increased significant. The Cassandra driver side print a lot, a large number amount of snow log. Here was the poisoning process at that time. <clears throat> First, check the Cassandra cluster status, such as CPU, IO, accumulation of the thread pool, gossip information, etc. If there is no problem after first step, you can check the network for problem. So how to find the faulty node? You can use get endpoints to query the copy nodes of the key to find the public key, to find the public node of the key in the slow query. Uh, you can see the figure on the right. And from the picture on the right, you can see all the partition key involved in slow query have a common replica node, 23.20. Finally, it was find that this node has a issue with the network card and there was a packet loss problem. After the packet loss is repaired, the application latency is normal. This case is about the issue of an event load caused by inconsistent 
machine specif specifications. The application upgrade costs the amount of query requests to double that usual. Cause the load of some node in the Cassandra cluster to reach the limit, resulting in a large number of request timeout. The application cuts off the traffic and the Cassandra cluster resume. S symptom is that the cluster has a total 10 nodes, of which five Cassandra node has a load several times higher than the other five nodes. After our analysis, we find that when Cassandra selects a replica, it will sort it according to the specification of each node, and the higher of at the higher the specification, the higher the priority, and the more internal requests it received. There are many parameters that affect the selection strategy, including memory disk, CPU, etc. To this end, we did test. You can see the test result of the end of this slide. In a cluster, the comparison of the node latency between 16 chord and 8 chord is shown in this figure here. The latency of this code is higher the the machine latency of a call. So we recommend that when the Cassandra is deployed, the hardware configuration of all nodes must be consistency. It, this can prevent Cassandra from calculating the difference in the node score and routing request to node which with, with higher priority which leads to this issue. The last case is an issue encountered during data migration. When a production cluster is expanded, data migration is always stuck. 200 GB data migration is either stuck or it takes a day or two to complete expansion, which series seriously affect the progress of expansion. View the stream progress through the node 2 status. You can see the picture on the right, first one picture. <clears throat> and we use node 2 next data to query the result as, as shown in the figure. It has always been the status in the figures and has no change. On the receiving side, check the, where the streaming thread is stuck through JSTAG. You can see here the second picture. Then it was find out the receiving thread try to read the data stream from the socket. Use net data to check the migration port 7000 on the sending site and uh, find find that the data packet with 6 million cannot be sent out. In response to this problem, our analysis find that the parameter net IPv4 TCP stacks need to be set one set to one in a, in an environment with poor, poor network condition. After setting, 200 GB data can be migration in 20 minutes. Finally, I will share our best practice for using Cassandra in Huawei Consumer Cloud. Our team is responsible for all consumer cloud service accessing Cassandra. Based on our experience and using the best feature of Cassandra as far as possible, we have specified some rules for applications. I think this is very important reason why we can support Cassandra on such a 
large scale. We will review, we will review table structure of application. If the table structure does not conform to the to this road, it is not allowed to be created. The form of, for and for online application, Cassandra use on a large scale application use scenario must be restricted. And the, the form on the right is our accessory such as a single partition key is not discrete enough lead to pocket and the number of the records for a single partition key does not exist 100,000. And the uh, large, large capability application need to consider TTL to prevent unlimited data growth. In order to simplify the operation and maintenance, we have also made a set of our own monitoring system. Here's um, machine monitoring. We monitor the CPU, I.O., disk, and memory. <clears throat> and uh, the second feature is the request monitoring. We monitor the request volume, latency, success rate, etc. And the third picture is the thread pool monitoring. And uh, we monitor the Cassandra's red proof, such as read, write, compaction, and etc. And the uh, last picture is the cluster scale monitoring. And we also collect some log for monitoring, include tombstone, large partition key, hints, etc. That's all I have shared this time. Thank you. questions uh thank you firstly for that presentation very informative okay. uh, so the first one is uh, is there any rdb ms being used or is it only cassandra uh rdb or are there I, other use cases uh on our team we only use cassandra's but uh, uh i know other teams use other rdb such as MySQL and uh, Oracle database. So uh, I, my question is clear, you uh, I think so. Mm, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, okay. So that was uh, from the audience. I, I actually have a question. Um, okay. You, you mentioned we should never exceed a, a hundred or num tokens yeah. in the cluster. Do yeah. you mean the total number of V nodes across all the nodes? So if you summed the tokens for all the nodes, it must be less than a hundred thousand. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. I think. Okay. We are out of time, so thank you again. Thank you, thank you. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>